We are coming to think of God dwelling in man rather than working in man from without. Science looks for things and then stops. Science finds the eternal energy that is everywhere. Religion looks for the power behind this energy and finds it in people. But this isn't really a new finding. The Bible says the same thing, and it says it in very clear, specific wording that makes sense. Knowest thou not that thou art the temple of the living God? This is the key to the inner world's amazing ability to create. For those who want to master power, here it is. Giving up everything is not the same thing as excelling. Giving up is not success. We can't help others unless we have strength. The number infinity is not broke, and neither should we be, since we are the symbols of infinite power. What if I told you that the most extraordinary treasure you possess is yourself? If you read this part carefully, you will understand that all forces, objects and facts are caused by the mind at work. The mind works through thought, and thought is creative. Men are thinking in ways they have never thought before. Because of this, we live in a creative age, and the world is giving the most valuable gifts to those who think. Imagine this. Your life, your abilities, and the choices you make form the most precious assets you'll ever have. Isn't it then crucial to unlock your full potential and transform into the best version of yourself? You possess an endless ability to learn, evolve, and achieve greatness. It's never too late. In this way, then, we are always making new versions of ourselves. We are what we thought about yesterday, and we will be what we think about today. It's not the things we want, or the things we think someone else has, that the law of attraction brings to us. It's our own things that we have made with our thoughts, whether we are aware of it or not. Sadly, a lot of us are making these things without realizing it. Think about how careful we would be if we were making a house for ourselves. We would study every detail, take good care of the materials, and only choose the best of everything. But look how careless we are when we build our mental home. This is much more important than any physical home, because everything that can happen in our lives rests on the materials we use to build our mental home. What kinds of things does this stuff have? We've seen that it comes from memories we've saved deep in our minds. If these thoughts were ones of fear, unease, worry or anxiety, or if they were negative, depressing or uncertain, then the material we are making today will have the same negative feel to it. It will be broken and rotten instead of valuable, and it will only make us tired, worried and anxious. We will spend a long time fixing it up and making it look at least nice. But what happens if we only think brave thoughts, if we are hopeful and positive, and if we immediately put any negative thought in the refuge pile and refuse to have anything to do with it, to associate with it, or to identify with it in any way? The things we think about now are the best kind. There is no fear or worry about the future because we know the structure is hard, the material is solid, and it won't fade. We can make any kind of material we want and use any color we want. There aren't any changes or things to hide. This is a fact about psychology. We don't have a theory or an idea about how these thoughts work. They are not a secret. In fact, anyone can understand them because they are so easy. There is something we should do every day to keep our minds clean, wash them. If we want to make progress, we need to clean up our minds, our hearts and our bodies. The material that is left over after this process of mental cleaning will be good for creating the ideas or mental pictures that we want to come true. There is a beautiful farm with lots of space, food, running water, and good trees just waiting to be claimed. There are empty fields all around. The house is big and bright, with beautiful paintings, a full library, lavish details, and all the comfort and luxury you could want. In order to use the land, his relatives only need to prove their right to it and take control of it. He needs to use it. He can't let it go bad. The condition that must be met is to use it. 
If you ignore it, you'll lose it. Power over the mind and heart. Dominion over useful power. You have a gift like that. You're the winner. You have the right to claim your property, own it, and use it. One of its benefits is power over your situation. In your balance, health, peace, and wealth are all good things. It brings peace and balance. To get its great benefits, all you have to do is study it. It doesn't ask for any sacrifices other than giving up its limits, bonds, and weakness. It gives him an honorable robe and a staff. There are three steps that must be taken to get this gift. He has to really want it. He needs to back up what he said. He needs to take the property. You have to agree that these conditions are not bad. You know what genetics is and how it works. A lot of proof has been gathered by Darwin, Huxley, Heckel, and other experts that genetics is a rule of evolution. Progressive genetics gives people their straight back, their ability to move, their digestive systems, their blood flow, their brain strength, their muscle strength, their bone structure, and many other physical skills. There are even more interesting facts about how mental strength is passed down. All of this is what you could call his human legacy. Scientists haven't found the lineage yet though. It comes before and sits below all of their studies. At one point, they give up and say that they can't describe what they see. This gift from God is now fully operational. The first creation was ordered by a good force, which is a live feeling that comes from the Holy Spirit that is in everything. Scientists haven't been able to make life, but this does. It sticks out from all other great forces and can't be reached. It's like nothing people have ever seen. It's the highest level of human experience. This never-ending flow of life goes through you. It's you. Your access is made up of the things that make up your mind. The key to power is to keep these doors open. Isn't it worth the trouble? The great truth is that you are the source of all life and power. People, situations and events may point out needs and chances, but you have the inner strength and power to meet these needs. Stay away from lies. Set up a strong base for your knowledge of the forces coming straight from the endless source, which is the global mind of which you are a copy. The people who have this gift will never be the same again. They now feel powerful in a way that they never thought possible. They will never be shy, weak, unsure, or scared again. They are inextricably linked to power. They woke up in some way. They all of a sudden realized that they have a huge hidden ability that they had no idea they had. We have this power inside us, but we can't get it unless we use it. To use it is a requirement for having this property. Every one of us is a way for the all-powerful power to show itself. The channel gets blocked if we don't use it, so we can't get anything else. On every level of existence, in every job, and in every calling in life, this is true. We get more when we give more. Athletes who want to get stronger use the strength they already have. The more they put in, the more they will get back. If an investor wants to make more money, he or she must spend the money they already have. Only by doing this can they make more money. A business owner who doesn't keep up with sales will soon have no money coming in. The company that doesn't provide good service will quickly lose clients. A lawyer who can't get things done will soon lose clients. So it goes everywhere. Power depends on how well we use the power we already have. This is true in every area of life and in every undertaking. It is the truth of the power that all known power among men creates spiritual power. What's left when you take away the spirit? There's nothing. If spirit is everything, then knowing this will give you the power to show all kinds of power, mental, physical, or spiritual. Everything you own is the result of your money awareness or collected mental attitude. This is the magic wand that will help you get the idea and make plans for how to carry them out. You will enjoy carrying them out just as much as you enjoy the happiness of completing them. Now go to your room, sit in the same position and seat as before, 
and mentally choose a spot that feels good to you. Picture it in your mind in full. Look at the houses, the trees, the area, your friends and family, and everything else. The first time you try to focus, you will think of everything but the thought you want to think about. Don't let this stop you, though. You will win in the end. But if you want to be persistent, you have to do these routines every single day. Part 2 of the study questions and answers. How much of our mind is made up of the subconscious? 90% or more. Does this huge brain storehouse get used often? No. What's the harm? The fact that they can consciously control it is something that not many people understand or value. From where did the conscious mind get its tendency to rule? From genetics, which means it comes from all settings, going back many generations. What does the law of attraction mean for us? Ours. What's ours? What we are at our core, and we are the result of our most recent thought, whether it was aware or not. What are the things that we use to build our mental homes? About the thoughts we have. How do you get power? The realization that power is everywhere. Where does it come from? There is life and power inside. What does the ownership of power depend on? Upon making good use of the power we already have. Here is the third and final part of the introduction. This part will teach you a lot about the most amazing machine ever made. This machine can help you build health, strength, success, wealth, or anything else you want. Having needs means you have to do something, and when you do something, you get a result. Our tomorrow is always being built from the present through the process of change. Both general and individual growth happen slowly and steadily with growing ability and volume. We know that if we break other people's rights, we will feel bad about it and get in trouble. Every moment is a sign that you need to focus on the best goal, which is doing the most good for the most people. Wishing for things to go well and keeping relationships peaceful all the time will lead to results. Attachment to wrong ideas is the biggest problem. To connect with infinite truth, we need to be at peace with ourselves and be able to accept knowledge. The listener needs to be tuned in to the sender. Even though the mind is creative and thought comes from the mind, this doesn't mean that the world will change how it works to fit our ideas or needs. It means that we can live in harmony with the world. Once we do this, we can ask for anything we deserve, and it will surely come to us. Part 3. That the universal mind is so great that it's hard to grasp all of its powers, options and effects that are endless. We've found that this mind is not only all knowledge, but also all matter. Then how does it get made? How can we make the impact we want happen? And if you ask an electrician what electricity will do, he will tell you that electricity is a form of energy, and what it does depends on what it is tied to. This part of the machine will determine whether we get heat, light, force, music, or some other amazing power show where this important energy has been used. What kind of effect can thought have? There is only one answer. Thought is mind in action, just like wind is air in action. What it does depends on what it is tied to. So, this is the key to mental power. It has everything to do with the system we connect ourselves to. What kind of system is this? Do you know anything about the way that Edison, Bell, Marconi and other electrical geniuses made place, space and time into just words? But have you ever thought that the limitless potential power, which you can use to change the world, was created by a more important person than Edison? We are used to looking at the mechanisms of the tools we use, like tilling the land and the mechanisms of the cars we drive. But most of us are happy to stay completely ignorant of the best mechanism that has ever existed, the human brain. Let's look at how amazing this system is. That way, we might be able to better understand the different effects it has. Our minds are the first place where we live, move, and have our being. 
This all-powerful, all-knowing and all-present world will react to what we want based on our faith and purpose. The goal has to be in line with the way we are, which means it has to be artistic or productive. Our faith has to be strong enough to create a current of force that is strong enough to make our goal come true. Be it done according to thy faith is a sign of scientific truth. What happens in the outside world is caused by what each person does and how they respond to the universe. This is what we mean when we say think. The brain is the part of the body that does this. Think about how amazing it is. Are you moved by the creativity of old or new ideas, music, flowers, books, or other things? Remember that before you can recognize beauty, your brain has to match it up with something else that is beautiful. It is impossible for the brain to describe any value or principle that it finds in nature. In its early stages, the brain is like a world that is ready to grow whenever it is needed. You will find it easier to understand how these amazing things are happening if you know that this is a science fact and one of nature's wonderful rules. People say that the nervous system is like an electrical circuit, with the white matter being the shielded lines that carry the current and the bank of cells being where the power comes from. This is how every urge or wish gets through the mechanism, through these pathways. Messages go to and from the brain through the spinal cord, which is also a major nerve road. That's where the blood that runs through our veins and arteries comes from. Blood gives us new energy and power, the perfectly organized structure that the body sits on, and finally, the lovely delicate skin that covers the whole thing is a wonderful thing. So, this is the temple of the living God, and the person gave up power, and the outcome will depend on how well you understand the process it controls. The brain cells work on everything you think. In the beginning, the thing that the thought is aimed at doesn't react. But if the thought is clear and focused enough, the material will finally answer and show itself correctly. Any part of the body can be affected by this mental force, which gets rid of any bad results. In business, having a great idea of and understanding of the rules that guide the thinking world is very valuable because it improves your ability to judge things and makes it easier to understand and value facts. The man who looks inside rather than outside can use the strong forces that will eventually decide his path in life and bring him into vibration with everything that is best, biggest and most desirable. Focusing or paying attention is likely the most basic and important skill for mental growth. The potential of attention when used correctly are so amazing that someone who isn't familiar with them would think they are impossible. The most important skill anyone can learn is how to pay attention, which is something that all successful people have in common. The best way to understand the power of attention is to think of it as a magnifying glass. As the glass moves and the rays go from one place to another, they don't have any particular force. But if you hold the glass absolutely still and let the light focus on one point for a while, you will see the result right away. The same is true for thought power. If you move your thinking from one thing to another, the power seems to go away, but nothing happens. But pay attention to or concentrate on any task for a while and nothing will be able to stop this power. A very easy answer to a complicated problem, I would say. Okay, give it a try. If you have never learned to focus your mind on a clear object or purpose, pick any object and focus your attention on it for 10 minutes, focusing on a clear goal. This is not possible. 12 times the mind will wander and you'll have to bring it back to the original goal. Each time the effect will be gone. Not being able to keep your mind on the goal will mean that you will have accomplished nothing by the end of the 10 minutes. If you pay attention though, you will finally be able to get past any problems that come up in your way. And practicing is the only way to get this great power. It works the same way as anything else. Practice makes perfect. Bring a picture to the same seat in the same room, in the same position as before, 
to work on your attention power. Spend at least 10 minutes looking at it very carefully. Look at how the eyes are moving, the shape of the face, the clothes, and the way the hair is styled. In short, pay close attention to every feature in the picture. Put your hands over it, close your eyes, and try to picture it in your mind. You should feel proud of yourself if you can see every feature clearly and make a good mental picture of the picture. If not, do it again until you can. This step's only goal is to get the ground ready. We'll be ready to plant the seed next week. By doing these kinds of routines, you will finally be able to manage your mood, your attitude, and your state of mind. The smartest investors are learning to stay away from the crowd more and more so that they have more time to plan, think, and get in the right frame of mind. Business people who are already successful are always showing that it pays to follow what other successful business people are thinking. One good idea could be worth a lot of money, but it can only come to people who are open to it, ready to receive it, and feeling good about their chances of success. Mankind is learning how to harmonize with the mind of everyone else. The lesson is that everything is connected. They are learning basic ways to do things and how to think, which is changing things and getting more results. It seems that your surroundings and situations move in the same way as your mental and spiritual growth. You are learning that knowledge leads to growth, action leads to inspiration, and vision leads to chance. Always put your spiritual needs first and then change into an endless number of success opportunities. These options are endless because each person is the way the universe shows itself to the world. It's through thought that we can take in the core of power and hold it in our minds until it becomes part of our everyday minds. This can be done by following a few simple rules that are taught in this system over and over again. The master key is what opens the storehouse of universal truth. At the moment, illness and mental stress are the two main causes of human pain. Some natural law has been broken which makes these things very clear. This is definitely because of the fact that we only know some things right now but the dark clouds that have built up over hundreds of years are starting to lift and many of the bad things that come with false information are going away with them. If you know the power of right thought, you know that a man can change himself, get better, rebuild himself, take charge of his surroundings and be in charge of his own life. In part three of Positive Action, Larson looks at study questions and answers. What are some things that electricity, heat, light, energy and music can do? What does it depend on for these effects? On the device that the power is hooked up to? What happens when each mind acts and interacts with the world, the things that happen to us and the experiences we have? How can changing the way the world is made be used to change these situations? What kind of system is this? The mind. For what reason can the way we think change it? Thoughts make brain cells, and these cells react to a thought in the world that matches them. How much is the ability to focus worth? It's the most important skill you can learn and what sets successful people apart. How can someone get it? By doing the tasks in this method on time. Why is this important? Because it will help us manage our thoughts and since thoughts are what cause things to happen, situations are what happen as a result. There is a link between what we do and what happens. What does it mean in the real world to change conditions and increase results? Men are learning the basics of how to think in a healthy way. Part 4 of the introduction. People have always thought that there is an unseen power that makes everything happen and keeps the universe going. We could give this power a name and call it God, or we could think of it as the spirit or energy that runs through everything. As far as the individual is concerned, the result is the same either way. What is real, physical and obvious is what is personal and what he can feel. His body, brain and nerves make it up. The spiritual, 
the unseen and the indifferent are all parts of the subjective. Because it is a physical thing, the personal is aware. The abstract, which is the same kind and quality as everything else, is not aware of itself, which is why it is called the subconscious. This means that the personal or awareness has the power of will and choice, and it can use selection when picking the ways it solves problems. The spiritual or abstract being that is part of and one with the source and root of all power can't make a choice because it has all the resources it needs. There are ways that it can and does get things done that the human mind can't even imagine. You will then understand that it is your choice whether to rely on the human will with all of its flaws and limitations or to use the inner mind to tap into the endless possibilities. You have a wonderful power that you can use if you choose to understand, respect and identify it. This is the science account of that power. In this fourth part, a way to consciously use this all-powerful power is explained. Visualization is the process of making pictures in your mind. The picture is like a mold or model that will help your future come together. Make the design beautiful and easy to see. Don't be scared. Make it big. Never forget that you are the only one who can limit your own progress. You are not limited by money or supplies. Seek your source in the universe. Think about it and make it real in your mind before it shows up anywhere else. Make sure the picture is clear and accurate. Keep it clear in your mind and it will bring the thing closer over time. Don't forget that you can be anything you want to be. This is another well-known psychological fact, but reading about it won't help you in any way. Making the mental picture won't help you at all, let alone making it real. Only a very small number of people are willing to put in the work, persistence and mental strength needed to do it. Ideation is the first step. It's also the most important step because it's the plan you'll use to build. It has to be strong and last forever. When the builder plans a 30-story building, he or she has thought about every line and detail from the start. Before putting up a bridge over a chasm, the expert has to figure out what a million different forces need. Just like you will picture what you want before you take the first step, they see the end. You need to know what you will get before you plant the seed. That's what idealization is. If you're not sure, sit in the chair every day until the picture becomes clear. It will grow over time. The general plan will be rough at first, but it will start to take shape. First, the idea will form, then the details. Over time, you'll gain the skills to make plans that will come true in the real world. You will learn about what lies ahead for you. The next step is to visualize these things. You need to get a better look at the picture. Pay attention to the details, and as they start to show you the shape and how to make it real, it will appear. Things will flow into each other. The mind will move the body to act. Actions will lead to new ways. Ways will help people become friends. Friends will bring about good luck. And the third step, materialization, will have been completed. It is clear to everyone that the universe had to be thought out before it could exist. Also, if we are ready to listen to the great designer of the universe, our thoughts will come to life in the same way that the universe did. It is the same thought that is working through each person. Things are the same in terms of kind and quality. The only change is level. The builder thinks about his building and pictures it the way he wants it to be. His mind turns into a shape that the building will finally come out of, no matter how tall, short, pretty, or boring it is. On paper, his ideas come to life. Finally, the right materials are used and the building is finished. The creator has the same picture in his head of his idea. Take Nikola Tesla as an example. She was one of the smartest and most important creators of all time, this man made the most amazing realities come true. Before he started working on an idea, he always saw it in his mind. Tesla did not rush to make them real, 
and then waste time fixing mistakes. After making the thought in his mind, he kept it there as a mental picture that he could use to think about and improve. This way, he writes in his book, The Electrical Experimenter, I am enabled to quickly develop and refine a concept without touching anything. When I have advanced far enough to incorporate in the invention every possible improvement I can think of and see no faults in it, I turn the product of my brain into something concrete. Invariably, my design works as I conceived it should, and for 20 years I have found no exception. If you can carefully follow these steps, you will grow faith, the kind of faith that is the substance of things you hope for and the proof of things you haven't seen. You will also gain confidence, the kind of confidence that helps you be strong and brave. You will improve your ability to focus, which will let you block out all thoughts except those that are related to your goal. It is the law that what you think will come true, and only someone who knows how to become the God-thinker of his own ideas can speak up as the master. Holding the picture in your thoughts over and over again is the only way to get clarity and confidence. Each repeat makes the picture clearer and more accurate than the last. The appearance will be as clear and accurate as the image. Before it can happen in the real world, you have to build it strong and solid in your mind, in your inner world. And without the right materials, you can't build anything useful, not even in your mind. When you have the right stuff, you can make anything. Just make sure you have the right stuff. You can't fix a broken dress to look nice. Millions of quiet mental workers will make this stuff and turn it into the shape of the picture you have in your head. Take a look. There are more than 5 million of these ready-to-use brain cells in your body. They are called neurons. In addition to this, there is another backup force of at least an equivalent number ready to be called into action at the smallest need. Your power to think then is almost unlimited, and this means that your power to make the kind of stuff that is necessary to build for yourself any kind of setting you wish is nearly unlimited. Along with these millions of mental workers, the body has billions of mental workers, and each one is smart enough to understand and act on any message or thought it gets. The body is being made and fixed by all of these cells. They also have mental power that they can use to bring in everything they need to grow perfectly. They do this by the same rule and in the same way that all living things draw to themselves the things they need to grow. The oak, the rose and the lily all need certain things to grow in the best way. They get them by silently asking for them, which is the most effective way for you to get what you need for your full growth. Make the mental picture clear, precise and perfect. Hold it tight and the way will show up. The supply will follow the call. You'll be shown the right thing to do at the right time and the right way. A true wish will lead to a sure hope, which needs to be backed up by a firm request. The true wish is the feeling, the sure hope is the thought, and the strong request is the will. Together, they always bring about success. As we've seen, the thought gets life from the feeling, and the will holds it in place until the law of growth makes it real. Isn't it wonderful that man has such immense power within him and doesn't know it? Isn't it strange that we've always been told to find strength and power outside of ourselves? We've been taught to look outside of ourselves instead, and whenever this power shows up in our lives, we're told it's from beyond this world. Many people today understand this great power and try very hard to take care of their health, power and other things, but they keep failing. It looks like they can't make the law work. Most of the time, the problem is that they are looking at the outside world. They want money, power, good health and plenty. But they don't understand that these things are results that will only come once the cause is found. People who don't care about the outside world will only look for truth and wisdom, and they will find that this wisdom will show them the source of all power. 
which will show up in their thoughts and actions in ways that make the outside world what they want it to be. This truth will be shown through good intentions and brave actions. Only make ideas. Don't think about what's going on outside. If you make your inner world beautiful and rich, the outside world will reflect and reflect what's inside you. You will learn that you have the power to make ideas, and those ideals will be sent out into the world of effects. Take the case of a man who is in debt. He will keep focusing on his debt and thinking about it all the time. Because thoughts lead to actions, he will not only keep the debt, but he will also make it worse by taking on more debt. Because he is using the great law of attraction, what will happen is, what will happen, loss, leads to even more loss. So, what is the right principle? Do the things you want instead of the things you don't want. When you think of abundance, picture perfect ways and plans to use the law of abundance. Picture the situations that the rule of wealth makes possible. This will lead to appearance. If the law works perfectly to bring poverty, lack, and all kinds of limitations to people who think about lack and fear all the time, then it will also work perfectly to bring conditions of plenty and wealth to people who think about courage and power all the time. This is a problem that many people find hard to solve. Because we are too worried, we show worry, fear, and stress. We need to help and do something. We are like a kid who plants a seed and then checks on it every 15 minutes to see if it's growing. The seed will never grow in these conditions, of course, and this is exactly what many of us do in our minds. We need to plant the seed and not touch it for a while. There is no way that we will just sit around and do nothing. We will do more and better work than ever before. There will always be new stations. There will be new doors. You just need to keep an open mind and be ready to act when the time comes. The power of thought is the most powerful way to learn, and if it is focused on a single subject or object, it can solve any problem. It is possible for people to understand everything, but they have to learn how to control their thoughts so they do what they want. Remember that your thoughts are the fire that makes the steam that turns the wheel of fortune, which your experiences are based on. Ask yourself a few questions and then wait with awe for the replies. Do you always know who you are inside? Do you stand up for yourself or do you go along with the crowd? Keep in mind that masses never lead, they only follow. What happened to the people who fought hard against the steam engine, the automatic loom and every other new idea or improvement at the time? This week's task is to picture a friend. Look at him the same way you did the last time. Look at the room and its furniture and remember what was said. Look at his face now. Make it clear. Now, talk to him about something that interests both of you. Look at how his face changes. Look at him smile. Could you do it? Sure, go ahead and do it. So, get his attention. Tell him an exciting story. See how his eyes light up with happiness or excitement. Are you able to do everything? If so, you have a good mind and are making great progress. Part 4 of the study questions and answers. What does imagery mean? The act of making mental pictures. What do you get when you think this way? If we keep the mental picture or image in our minds, we can slowly but surely bring it closer to us. We have the power to be anything we want. What does idealization mean? Visualizing or idealizing plans that will finally come true in the real world is what planning is. Why do we need truth and certainty? Because seeing makes you feel and feeling makes you be. First the mental, then the emotions, and finally the endless ways to reach your goal. How do you go about getting these? Each time the same thing is done, the picture becomes more accurate than the last one. How do you keep the things that make up your mental image safe? Through millions of brain cells known as neurons. How do you make sure that the conditions are right for your dream to come true in the real world? All situations and events come about because of the law of attraction, which is a natural law. 
What are the three steps that must be taken for this law to work? Sincere desire, sure hope, and faithful desire. Why do so many fail? Why? Because they focus on death, sickness, and bad luck. The law works perfectly, and the bad things they fear happen. What else could you do? Focus on the good things you want to happen in your life. Here are the seven steps in the 1000% method that will make you at least 0.11% better every day, 0.51% better every week, 2% better every month, and 26% better every year. Start by getting up two hours early and reading for an hour in your field. The golden hour sets the tone for the rest of the day. Turn off the TV and put the newspaper down. Take the first hour to think about and work on yourself. The day's direction is set by this hour. Second, write down your main goals again and go over them every morning before you start your day. Spend some time writing down your goals in the present tense as if you had already reached them in a spiral notebook. This sets them in your brain so that you are always on the lookout for chances to reach your goals. Third, make plans every day ahead of time. Ahead of time, before you leave for the day and go to bed, write down all the things you need to do. So, while you sleep, your inner mind can work on your list. When you wake up in the morning, you often have thoughts and ideas that will help you reach your daily goals more quickly and easily. Fourth, always focus on what will give you the most out of your time. Pick the one job that will make your work life better, the most, and start working on it first thing in the morning. Five, listen to audiobooks that teach you things in your car. You can turn your car into a mobile school or a college on wheels. You should never let your car go anywhere without useful music playing. If you do this one thing, it will give you a thousand percent rise over the next few years. Sixth, ask yourself two questions every time you do something. These questions really are magic because they help you learn and grow faster from everything that happens. The first question is, what did I do right? Second, what would I do differently? The law of attention says that whatever you focus on grows in your life. Your life gets better as you pay attention to it. It's said that what you focus on makes you better at it. You should treat every person you meet like a million dollar customer. This is the seventh and final part of the thousand percent method. You should treat your co-workers the same way you would treat an important client. Feel like every potential customer or prospect bought a million dollars worth of what your business sells and wants to do it again. You should treat your family and friends like they are the most important people in the world, because they are. Remember that the best thing you have is yourself. Your ability to make money is the most important thing about you. You should work on improving yourself every day so that you can make even more money. As of right now, you have the power to change yourself so that you can reach all of your emotional and financial goals and become everything you can be. One and a half percent of people start their first job as adults. So it's like a long race. There is a big race and everyone lines up. The gun goes off and everyone starts running. After that, some people get ahead, just like in a run. In this case, most people stay in the middle of the wage race, but some people fall far behind. I think this is one of the best studies on success that has ever been done. It was done over 25 years. They want to know how these people are making so much money. Every month they get paid almost a million dollars just for going to work. For any reason, if they lost their job, another company would hire them right away and pay them $10 million a year. How is this possible? When these researchers from a big university went back, they thought, wow, these people must be very smart. They must have unique skills. For them to be so great in life, they must have some special skills or traits. They looked at their school records, as well as records from their first and second jobs. What did they find? In general, these people were fine. They didn't look any different from everyone else when they first started working. They were just okay. After that though, 
they all started to use the same plan, and this plan will make a huge difference in your life and work. It's really that easy. When these people started their first job, the first thing they did was ask their boss, Boss, I want to make a valuable contribution at this work and be successful in this company. What one skill would help me the most to be more successful and make a more valuable contribution? The boss would reply, Well, if you were very good at this, negotiating, building teams, selling or reading financial statements, if you were R, they would then go to work and work on this one skill, like a shooter instead of a machine gunner. They would work on one skill at a time. It could take a month, three months, or a year, but they would work on that skill every day. This is the magic number. Two hours a day, five days a week, for a total of 10 hours, was the magic amount. You should work on one skill for two hours every day, five days a week. These days, knowledge and skill are very important to your success. With knowledge and skill, you can make money. It is very important that you know what you're talking about and can use that knowledge to get people to pay you for what you do. The people who lose their jobs don't realize that they haven't kept their skills and information up to date enough to support their pay, but they are becoming less useful faster than ever. So, a job that is useful now might not be useful in a week, a month, or a year. In just a few years, new technology can make an entire business useless. So, one thing you should always ask yourself is, what will be your next job? Here's the most important question. What do you need to do right now to improve your skills so that you can make the money and live the way you want to in your next job? Personal success is the key to your next job. Getting to the top of the heap or the field is the goal. Once you get there, you want to stay there to keep and improve your lifestyle. What should you do? Who do you need to be? Question, what one or two skills could you learn that, if you got really good at them, would have the most positive effect on your future? This is one of my favorite questions of all time. That's your job. If you need to, you can ask your boss what it might be, but you should do everything you can to find out. Then, you should work on developing those skills. Now, you have to become a victim of change if you don't want to be a master of it. Because if you don't take charge of your life, it will take over your life. You're just tossed around by the waves of life. The most important thing we've talked about so far when it comes to making potential, speeding up your job, reaching your full potential, and becoming everything you're capable of becoming is that you should always be learning. This is so important that I can't say it enough. Everywhere I go, I meet people who have nothing when they first come to America. But by constantly learning, they're able to do great things and make great lives for themselves. Take charge of your life. Think of yourself as the boss of your own business. Think of yourself as a boss. Make the rules for your world. Teach your kids how to behave. If you want your kids to have a great life, you should make your own great by learning new things all the time. As a boss, you should see yourself as an example, hold yourself to high standards and work every day to keep, grow and improve your ability to make money. That means a week has 168 hours. Wonderful. For those of you who want to be the best at what you do, make the most money and be the most famous person in the world, Spend 10 hours of that time on yourself. That's it. This was the plan used by all the top people I've worked with, including the heads of some of the world's biggest businesses. They also learn and improve their skills for two to three hours a week. Who is the third richest person in the world? The name of the person is Warren Buffett. His investments were worth a total of $350 billion last year, making him the third or fourth richest person in the United States and one of the richest people in the world. His earnings were $25 billion last year. Also, $25 billion is a lot of money. That's enough money for one person to build a business that makes $25 billion a year. And almost every day, 
Warren Buffett does the same things. Every day when he gets to work, he spends 80% of his time learning and reading things that are related to his job. Only 20% are meeting, calling, or doing something else. He learns new things 80% of the time so that he can make better choices and get better results. So, here's a question I sometimes ask adults. How many hours do you spend learning new things each week to make yourself more valuable and productive? They learned that these experts, who were paid a lot, saw their ability to make money as a ladder with steps that represent different skills. And learning a new skill makes it easier for you to make money. On top of that, you get better at using your other skills. And the more skills you have, the more money you can make. And when you learn something new, you can make more money. You will become more useful as you learn new skills and people will pay you more and more money for the work you do for them. If you decide to stop moving up the success ladder at any time, you will level off, just like 80% of other people do. But after that, you'll start to fall behind because the skills you have are quickly becoming useless and they're useless faster now than ever before. That means that if you're not constantly going up the ladder, you're going down it. And people don't know why their money isn't getting better. This is because they aren't getting anything done. They're not getting better at anything. There is no work being done on them to make them more popular. So, the best way to get ahead in life and become rich is to learn how to make more money. Each week they learn new skills for at least 10 hours. This is the one skill that truly helps them. Every time they climb that ladder, it turns into a routine and a part of their life. Focusing on one thing at a time and working on that one job until it's done is a big part of learning all the time. You also have to train yourself not to do anything else or let emails, bells, bits, noises and other things like that confuse you. Being able to focus on one thing like a laser beam is all it takes. Napoleon Hill wrote a book after Think and Grow Rich. It's called The Master Key to Riches and it tells you the answer in 260 pages. In the first paragraph he says, In this book you will learn the master key to riches. So, the whole book is full of motivational ideas and principles. The last line of the last chapter on the last page says, now you know the master key to riches is self-discipline, and we've found that's also what the most successful people have found. Making yourself follow through is the key to success. It basically said, whatever got you to where you are today is not enough to keep you there. To go any further, you must develop new skills. And new skills, your whole life, for all time. If you want to be successful in a world where knowledge and technology are changing quickly, as well as government policies and competition, you must also change quickly and even more quickly on the inside. So, the best people are always learning new things. The speaker said, everything is hard before it's easy and everything is hard at first, but later it becomes easy and automatic. You have to discipline yourself at first but after that, it gets easier and easier, and you feel happy. Now, here's the best part. When you discipline yourself to start and finish a task or part of a task, you feel like an athlete. So, let me ask you this. What do people call a runner who wins a race? Right on, the winner. I've studied this for a very long time. It says that endorphins, which are sometimes called nature's happy drug, are released by your body when you win. Plus, they give you adrenaline, which is a type of energy that comes from having a good time. So, when you finish the job, these drugs leave your body, making you happy. That's why they call it nature's happy drug. If you want to be happy, just start and finish a task, and you'll feel great. In fact, I ask people in some of my seminars, what are you learning today? Or, what are you working on today? and everyone should be able to answer. Today I'm working on strategy. Today I'm working on sales. Today I'm working on presentations. And today I'm working on building teams. 
Everyone should be learning something new. Now we're back to what I call the basics. And yes, we can't change the world, but we can always find our way back to the things that help us hold on. And I believe there are three main points. Their name comes from the old story about Vince Lombardi when he was in charge of the Green Bay Packers. People asked him, are you going to change the running plays, blocking plays, bring in a new game book, etc.? He replied, no. He said, we're not going to do anything different. We're going to become the best running, blocking, passing and kicking team in football. We're going to become brilliant. If you want something badly enough, you have to be determined to see it through until the end. If you aren't clear or aren't fully committed, the universal law will have to react in the same way. This is because it will be reflecting your weak wishes. So get a 3x5 card and write down your money goals. Would $10,000 or $100,000 work for you? Don't make having a million dollars in the bank your goal if you can't picture yourself having it. In the event that $50,000 is more appealing, you should write it down and trust that it, or something even better, will be sent to you. After writing down your goal, look at it every so often to remind yourself of how rich you are. People are getting richer all the time, and every day there are new millionaires. Some of these millionaires work hard to get their money, while others win the lottery, a contest, or a big jackpot in Las Vegas. Keep in mind that if someone else has a million dollars, you can too. Going to a Rolls-Royce store is one of my favorite ways to improve my luck. I can really picture how nice it would be to own a Rolls-Royce when I look at all those other beautiful cars. In my mind, I see myself driving down the coast in my Cornish Roadster, and then I see myself driving it home. Luxury cars and homes around me tell me that I can be rich too, because other people are rich. That is, if you want to become aware of wealth, go to places where wealth is found. In downtown, you will never feel or experience wealth in a public park or train stop. Plan a trip to the most expensive place you can think of to feel what it's like to have money. It could be a wealthy area, a fancy hotel, a pricey restaurant, or a nice shopping store. If you pick the pricey place, for example, you should go there. Forget about being able to buy more than coffee and sweetbread. Just being there will let you experience the wealth so that you can make these rich feelings a part of your own. That's what this game is all about. Take note of the soft furniture and the fancy feel of the place while you're there. Don't forget about the customers as they pull up in their fancy cars. Once you know what it's like to be wealthy, you can use these strong memories to help you picture yourself being wealthy. Beverly Hills was the first time I stayed at a fancy hotel. As I walked up to my room, I took note of how fancy and grand the lobby was. It was about two inches thick. There were beautiful paintings on the walls, and the hall had a big grand piano. The rooms cost between $300 and $2,000 a night, and it was clear that only wealthy people stayed there. I lingered in the hallway on my way back down that afternoon, taking in the atmosphere of the place. This kind of exercise can help you become more aware of your wealth. Getting away from places where people talk about lack and limits all the time will help you attract more of what you want. Negative energy can find you and try to get into your thinking. If it's strong enough, you can feel it pressing up against you. Without spiritual strength, things can get in the way of your growth and sway you in the wrong direction. If your friends talk about not having enough or being able to do something, then change the topic or go somewhere else. You should work on wealth thought, but don't tell them that. It's fine to share this kind of thinking with people who understand it, of course. However, the fact that you are keeping it a secret makes it easier for you to attract wealth. For instance, talking to someone when you're scared of them usually helps because you let go of energy when you talked about what was going on. Your feelings would get the best of you if you didn't tell anyone about your fears. Because you don't have to deal with bad outside distractions while working on a prosperity awareness. The fact that you keep it a secret makes your power stronger. Do you believe it or not, listener? 
One silly talk or fight about your commitment to wealth can ruin weeks of spiritual work, so don't open your mouth. The word secret comes from the same root as the word sacred, so keep your work on wealth holy by not telling anyone about it. Things will change in your life as your inner spirit grows. Instead of just going through life and dealing with whatever comes your way, you will start to realize that your life has a deep meaning and is developing according to the beliefs you hold in your subconscious. People will pay you back what they owe you, your money will last longer, and you will attract better money-making opportunities. You may even feel spiritually lighter and more sure that your goals are coming true. You will get the money you want faster if you can raise your awareness faster. How creative do you think? Your mind can still be filled with lots of wealth, even if you live in an apartment complex for low-income people. This will activate the universal law. A friend of mine lives in an old apartment building on the bad side of town. She consistently reminded herself of her wealth, and she kept thinking about having a lot of money every day and every month. This woman worked hard. To attract material prosperity, she did everything she could on a spiritual level. She dreamed about having a big house in a fancy part of town every night before she went to sleep. She thought about getting a new Volvo and taking trips all over the world in her mind. She ultimately met a wonderful man who sold real estate because she stayed true to her inner vision and this action plan. Another year went by and she married this man. On their wedding day, he gave her a new house and a new Volvo. The next thing I'm going to teach you is very important, so please write it down. Because this part is so important, you should take extra time to really understand it all before going on. Well, you need to be very clear about how much money you want right now. Know that you are working with a spiritual force that can send you money or anything else you need through a variety of ways. You could win the money, find it, or get it given to you. You could even start a company that makes a lot of money right away. You can't tell the universal law to give you $50,000 by 5 p.m. on Thursday and plan to get it. That's not how the law of universality works. It's not a power that can be played with or pushed. When you try to force or control something, you actually stop the process of creation. This is because these actions show that you don't believe in the universal law's creative process. So, if you want $50,000, you should look inside yourself and follow my examples to become aware of your wealth. In order for the universal law to start delivering, you must first make sure that you are ready to receive the money or whatever you need from any source. People, you are co-creating the universal law by making sure your ideas and deeds are in line with it. When you start requesting and informing the universal law that your money must come from a certain route, you are breaking the law. Being anxious and jealous is another thing that can stop you from getting rich. It takes a lot of energy to be impatient, which is a strong sign that you don't trust the universal law to deliver. Besides that, jealousy is a bad energy that can stop your wealth from coming true. Your constant feelings of jealousy block your good from coming to you because they are strong reminders that someone else has what you want. You should emotionally bless someone, like a friend or co-worker, when they get rich or have a lot of money. You should also accept their good luck. Then you should think about yourself and know that the same thing, or even better, can happen to you. Use of mantras correctly is the next thing I want to teach you. What we say is very creative, and it has the power to shape and change the way we live. In order to attract the money we require, we can use the powerful force of our words. By saying certain things over and over, we give our subconscious mind a strong belief in wealth. This makes us attract more money. Spiritual law says that you will attract into your life what you strongly believe in. I am a rich and prosperous child of the universe. I am financially prosperous in all that I do. Money comes to me easily and effortlessly, and I give thanks for my good. When you use mantras, it's important to keep them short and upbeat. 
This makes it easy for them to take root in your subconscious mind. Some people say their mantras in the afternoon or evening, but the best time is first thing in the morning when you're still awake. Your mind is going through about 12 waves every second. This is the best time to make a mark on your subconscious mind because it is open to new ideas like dirt that is ready to grow crops. So, first thing in the morning, you should put good thoughts in your mind. The first words you hear in the morning can affect the rest of your day, so think and say good things to yourself in the morning. When you woke up that morning, do you remember that the radio alarm clock played that song that you had been thinking about all morning? You could not take that song out of your mind. The reason for this is that you heard that song when you woke up, in the early morning, when your mind was open to new things. That song was stored in your mind, which is why you heard it over and over again all morning. That's why you should never hear the news first thing in the morning. Some news stories are bad, and you don't need to start your day that way. So, say your mantras out loud for a few minutes every morning before you get out of bed. There are times when you can't say your mantras out loud, but you can still think about them for a few minutes. Maybe you should plan to sit down and write your mantras on a piece of paper in a few minutes. It's important to be aware of the words you use throughout the day to talk about your life. When you talk about yourself, do you use creative, lively words, or do you say bad things? Because the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between a joke and a serious statement, you should never make fun of money. I know a woman who is always sick and always saying, I am so broke, I am so poor. Because of this, bad things never happen to her. Sadly, her bad thoughts and words keep her from having enough money. Now I'm going to say something else important, so make notes. What you think, say, believe, and do are all constant statements of the universal law of who you are. Yes, it's true that a deed is a statement. A lot of people have never heard this thought before, and if we want the universal law to react to our thoughts of plenty, we have to feel good about everything in our lives. As soon as a negative thought comes up, switch it out for a positive statement or a happy memory of a time when you made enough money to meet your wants. When I say, watch what you do, I mean this. Where do you buy your clothes? Do you spend time in thrift stores when you can just grab what you need at a major store? You have $1,000 saved, but you still buy the cheapest jacket you can find, right? It's fine to buy a cheaper jacket if you don't have the money for a higher quality one. If you have the money to buy a good jacket though, do it. That will remind you that you always have the best. People who spend money are more likely to always have money on hand, since having money is an indication of wealth. When you have money in the bank, you should always be smart, but don't save it up when you need to pay for something important. Along with affirmations, the use of visualizations is another exercise you can do to attract wealth. The goal of this practice is to create a clear mental image of what you want in your mind. This is important because you need a mental image of what you want in order to obtain it. Also, when you think about what you want, feelings about it may come up. You can use these feelings to change your goals if you need to. For instance, if you set the goal to attract $100,000 but find it hard to believe it can happen, or if you feel like you should aim a little lower, you should change your goal to $50,000 or something that feels much better to you. Listen, pay attention to how you feel. That's your gut talking to you. When I had credit card bills to pay off, I would close my eyes for 10 minutes every day and picture my pocket full of cash. Then I would picture my credit card bills showing that I had no debt. This was a nice and uplifting image for me, and I liked doing this. The important thing is to make a good picture of yourself that you can accept. It's been a long time since I did this exercise, but I remember having trouble with some images. Like when I was working out, I would try to picture my bank account showing a sum of $1 million, but I could never see it. In my mind, all I saw were a lot of zeros. As my understanding of myself grew, 
I changed my goals based on what my thoughts and subconscious mind told me. I began to picture a $50,000 check written in my name. For some reason, that picture worked better for me, and the number felt better to me. That's exactly what the universal law gave me, $50,000 as I continued to picture and confirm my wealth. If you have trouble seeing certain images clearly in your mind, that means your subconscious mind is telling you to change your goals a bit. I want you to know that the power you have inside you is alive and smart, and it is always looking out for your best. So, pay attention to how you feel, because that's how your subconscious mind talks to you. Now I'll talk about a part of my training that I really enjoy. It's one of the most interesting parts of this philosophy, and it's also one of the best ways to get the money you want. In fact, this exercise is so strong that it can make the process of creation go much faster. It's interesting that up to 99% of goods on the market that claim to bring wealth never even talk about this subject, which is called the practice of receiving. Receiving is so important that you will only be able to receive from the universal law 50% of the time if you can't learn it well and practice it. A man on the street will tell you that it's better to give than to receive if you bring up getting. If you want the universal law to respond to your thoughts of plenty, you must learn to accept gifts from other people. This is especially true when you are thinking about being wealthy, the truth is that a lot of people in our society have a tough time accepting. They understand how to give, but not how to receive. They get very scared about it. Many times, when someone offers to give them something, I have seen them get tense, drop their keys, or get sweaty hands. Does this sound like something you know? Yes, of course it does. It's something we all do. I've been there and dealt with the nerves that come up when someone gives me something or offers to give me something. But the important thing is to keep going and practice taking, even if it scares you at first. We have trouble being good listeners when we don't trust ourselves or are afraid of the unknown. But one of the main reasons we can't receive is that society tells us that having more things is a sign of greed. People have even told us that money is the cause of all bad things. It's not money that makes things bad. It's the love of money that often gets in the way. You can use money to pay your rent, buy a holiday, or get a new car. It's not good or bad at all. But greed comes into play when you want more than your fair share and also want your neighbor's share. That's what greed looks like. Because of the universal law, there is no such thing as lack. There is enough money for everyone. Yes, you should always say yes when someone offers you money, a chance or anything else, even if it's just paying the lunch truck bill. This way of thinking is only useful for people who are good at receiving it. Today, you should look for times to practice receiving during the course of your day. You don't have to use everything that other people give you. Give some of it to other people. Being open to what people have to offer, on the other hand, keeps your spiritual balance and is in line with your statement that you are a wealthy person. Listener, your statements and your commitment up to this point have all been to attract more money. And if you turn down anything that comes your way, even a free lunch, you're blocking the flow of good things into your life. So, if you tell yourself that you are wealthy, the world will always take care of you. But if you get upset because a friend wants to pay for lunch, you create a spiritual block and cancel your support of wealth. In short, your mind is out of rhythm. The universal law is perfectly balanced, so it can't bring about what you want because your energy isn't in sync with it when you say one thing and do another. If someone offers to pay for your lunch at the next lunch with a co-worker or friend, please accept it with thanks. Say, thank you, and accept it. Don't think about what you can do to return your friend. The universal law will take care of the details if your friend is meant to get something back. You should reflect on the day's events and be grateful that the universal law provided you with a free meal as you make your way home from the restaurant. 
You can expect this power to show up in your life more often. Keep in mind that you are working with energy, and since it is energy, it has to react to you in some way. Why did I say earlier that the universal law can never say no to you? Because it is intelligent energy, it has to always answer you in some way. Think about it this way. The universal law will answer you in two different ways. When your energy is high enough and you are ready to accept what you have set your heart on, it will answer you by saying yes. As Dr. Emmett Fox said, this is when you have set up a virtual version. Being patient is the second thing that the universal law will do to help you. This means you need to keep working on yourself. The signs of your wealth are still coming together, but it will take a little longer because you are still determined. On the other hand, you can be sure that the universal law will give you what you want if you keep trying and are really dedicated. One day at work, a woman friend of mine gave me some shoes that her husband had never worn. This is one of my favorite examples of how I kept trying to receive things. For that reason, I never turned down anything that was offered to me, even if it was just a few cookies or a can of soda. Anyway, this woman friend of mine told me the shoes were brand new and would fit me perfectly. There was a pair of two-tone leather shoes inside the box that looked like they were out of style 25 years ago. I was shocked when she gave them to me. There was mink fur where the laces were tied at the top of the shoes and the shoes were sticky. When my friend offered to give me the shoes, I almost laughed out loud, but I worked hard to hold back my laughter. I could have fallen to the floor laughing at that point, or I could have done what I said I would do and been a good player in that situation. I took those shoes to the first goodwill shop I could find on my way home that afternoon. In spite of the tacky dance shoes, I later thought about how I was able to receive. And that's how you should be, reader. You should get so good at this exercise that you never turn down something that comes your way. This will help you believe that you are a good listener and, most importantly, it will balance your energy so that your thoughts, words, feelings and actions are all in sync. The universal law of attraction will work for you and the money will come to you. You also can't turn down money you find on the ground. That's like how the universal law doesn't care about the difference between a penny and a million dollars. That's why you should always pick up coins that are lying around. Then you should think about how balanced you are getting and how much you are in sync with universal law. I keep all the coins I find on the street in a certain room in my house. In every moment that I see those coins, I thank the universal law for giving them to me because I know that they are energy coming to me from the universal law. As you become more aware of the little things in your life that are actually energy moving toward you from the universal law, your personal power will grow. Eventually, you'll find that your energy is strong enough to bring that goal into your life, no matter what it is. You might think it's silly to pick up pennies and get cheap dance shoes or other things from people who want to give them to you. But this practice isn't about collecting pennies. It's about your commitment to wealth being a good receiver and letting the flow of endless possibility into your life. You should focus on accepting everything that is given to you, even if it's just a cup of coffee or a small gift. When you do receive, make a mental note of your capacity to receive. Be grateful that the universal law is responding to you and then rest on the thought that the money you want is just around the corner. We've talked about the universal law, making goals, affirmations, visualizations, and the practice of getting. Now you can use what you've learned in real life. I have given you the most powerful method for wealth that you may ever find. I've already said that I used this same program to win $50,000 in my state's lottery and to make a business that makes me a lot of money. The power of the universal law can help you if you use it. The most important thing is that you follow the rules I've given you every day. That's what's called a wealth action plan. A $50,000 lottery win took eight months to come true. During that time, I consistently supported my wealth, practiced my visualizations, 
and stayed focused on my goal. The most important thing for me was to make sure that everything I did matched what I was confirming. I never said anything bad about myself or the people I knew out of my words. I knew I had to accept everything that came my way because I was supporting wealth and success. I also knew that my words and actions had to be in line with the order I set with the universal law. I would immediately switch out ideas of wealth for any negative ones that entered my mind. It was the same with what I said and did, which I carefully watched. The universal law can only give you what you think it can give you. As you can see, listener, your wealth has to come through your awareness in order to appear. Because of what you believe and what you expect, it has to come from you. Nothing can run through you if your mind is full of bad thoughts and hopes. My mind was full of bad things about money, and it took me eight months to get rid of them all. If I could get rid of all the bad stuff in one month, then my wealth would have shown up in that same month. Some people who listen to this show will be able to make their dreams come true in a matter of months, but for others, it may take a little longer. How much mental clutter and bad thoughts are present in your mind will determine what action you take. Reader, follow the plan and make every day a holy day when you can learn from the universal law all around you. There is a universal law that says you have all the power and will reach your goal if you stay true to your vision and act in line with it.